Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video uploaded by the priest Sha'ar, all right, of the Great Millstone Dallas branch. As you can see, the page title, GMS Judgment is here. Subscribe and be constantly edified. The title of the video I will be responding to is vocab, you err again, understanding Genesis, the 33rd chapter and the 10th verse, which is a response to this video uploaded by vocab Malone, which will play a portion of it to where he goes to Genesis, the 33rd chapter to make the argument. All right. Um, because Jacob, you know, after a long journey was happy to see his brother and we'll go into why and uh, break it down, you know, but I find it ironic that the narrative with this guy and with these Christians is that the biblical Edomites have been destroyed. Now, if they have been destroyed, when were they destroyed? We never get the answer. All right. How? All right. And why? All right. Well, if you go into biblical prophecy, you find out this is the nation of people whom the Lord has indignation with. This is the nation of people whom he openly and boldly proclaims that he hates. Yet, these Christians are, are rebelling against the Most High, okay, and pushing a doctrine that we should love what he hates. Going into any uh, scripture that they can find to find some sort of justice for Esau, but I thought Esau was done away with. And, you know, I was telling this to a brother you know, for years we've been, you know, uh, uh, prophesying and preaching and saying these people are the Edomites. Now we get to see that they're the Edomites. They're basically their actions and, you know, even the way that they're reacting to this whole Kanye Kyrie thing is 100 percent proof that they are the Edomites. This video where, 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 what we're going to show you where Esau is uh <laughs> uh, vocab Malone is using this argument to some somehow you know find good graces for Esau it lets you know that in the back of his head he knows that he's Esau all right he struggles with this before he goes to bed every night he, he he's like well if I am an Edomite well let me go into the Bible and find salvation for Esau or some sort of uh, good graces for Esau is really bothering at him <laughs> to where he has to do videos like this. OK, and in this video, the priest Shaar breaks it down. He goes into the history, which I'll tap into a little bit of that. But uh, make sure you watch this video because he go he goes in. All right. And clearly, even in the New Testament. All right. Paul. OK, who had this book scribed in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the 16th verse says what? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So why are Christians so reluctant to talk down on Esau when the Bible talks down on him? OK, NLT, make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal that that action alone should let you know that the man is wicked you see and his judgment is not just tied to him it's tied to the nation the edomites esau edom you see niv see that no one is sexually immoral or godless like esau okay it was the edomites who were the first nation to attack us all right. As we were uh, leaving out of Egypt, it was Esau who would not l allow the Israelites to go through their land to get to the chosen land. It was the Edomites whom uh, 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 the heavenly father ordered King Saul. OK, to hew in pieces and, and utterly obliterate out of the earth, which he he, he failed on that promise. OK. So why are Christians so gung ho about going into the Bible 
in trying to push a doctrine for people to love what the Heavenly Father hates. And the Lord blessed you, Edomites. And look at the, the society that you've uh, 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 produced through your rulership. You haven't used your rulership and your power to promote the uh, the good goodness of Yahweh Bashim Yashah or of the Bible. But anyway, let's go to this uh, video here. <laughs> All right. And you can see this guy's pulling out his hair because they're, they're, they're going crazy, going through the Bible, trying to figure out a way because in the back of their head, they know that, damn, this makes sense what they're saying. So now the people who they say have been obliterated off of the earth and no longer are, are, are exist, they're trying to find some sort of pass for them. Why is that? Let's get this in the book of Second Edges, the seventh chapter in the 43rd verse. It says, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality to come. We know that's tied to Esau being the end of the world. OK, the day of doom is what's going to take. You devils out with the, the fall of Babylon the Great. And who controls the revival of Rome, which is Babylon the Great? The Edomites, according to the Bible. You've been identified. So now you want to go and try to find any scripture you can to save yourself. That's all you're doing. Wherein corruption is passed. And Christianity is a part of the corruption that is going to pass. It says intemperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. That's happening in the earth through this word going out. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. You see that? You're not going to be able to save the people who are to be destroyed, nor are you going to be able to oppress him that is foretold and prophesied to get the victory. And that's ultimately the Israelites, Jacob. The Heavenly Father is getting ready to come through on his promise and it's happening where the man of sin is being revealed. So they're getting ready to, to lose their mind and go all out. Because Edomite supremacy, white supremacy is tarnished, it's through. So let's listen to this uh, video here and um, then we'll get some understanding and get up out of here. When we go to Esau... What do we see? We see, as I as I said, he's also described with the same way as as David is with this whole ruddy idea, right? And here's what's interesting: a lot of people, you know, they'll say these things about Esau. And ruddy just means handsome or good looking in your in your youth. I mean, come on, man! You 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 people are all over the place. You want to say, well, Adam was red. But then when we tie Esau to red, uh -uh, nah, y'all are all over the place. <laughs> the scriptures say that Esther was ruddy because of her beauty. All right. Goodness gracious. And Israelites come in all shades and, and, and different colors, man. You people are all over the place and you're scared. This doctrine got you Edomites all over the place. And all we have to do is really just sit back and watch you prove to the whole world that you're the Edomites. That's what you're doing. That What's happening with this whole anti-SEM thing is proof that you're the Edomites. It's proof that you're the wicked. You're proving to the whole world everything that we've been prophesying, starting with the apostles and elders, man, and the men who, who preach in the right spirit. You're proving everything we have been saying to be correct and true through your own actions. But he, they are twins to Jacob. And, and if it's in, and it seems like the phenotype should match all the way down, at least if they're direct descendants. You see, this is how, you know, the Christian church don't got it. Let's go to Genesis, the 25th chapter really quick, just real quick. We ain't got to go through the whole thing, but the, clearly the Bible, okay, clearly the Bible tells you in Genesis 25 and 23, because these two children were struggling together within the womb of Rebecca. 
All right. So they went and inquired of the Lord, of the prophet or the priest. OK. And the children, Genesis 25 and 22, struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahweh. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So it's two different nations that came out of one man. Did not Cain and Abel come out of Adam and they were two separate nations with two different genealogies? Well, this time it's twins, twins in the womb of Rebecca. And this is a fulfillment of the promise of the seed of the serpent. OK, which Cain's lineage returned through Esau having a, a friction. All right. With the seed of the woman. It's fulfilled in these two nations. Which are two separate. They shall be separated from thy bowels. Two different nations are in thy womb and one shall be stronger than the other. They're going to be separated. They're not going to be the same. OK. And we've done lessons on how that is possible for two different uh, 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 seeds that come out of one man to be their own separate nation. All right. And we have those lessons. If you need them, just ask on the comment board. OK. And all things are possible through the most high anyway. Right. So what in the hell is this guy talking about? This lets you know that these the, these Christians don't got it. They rebel against the most high <laughs> uh, uh, um, in their very doctrine and what they preach. It's an anti Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai doctrine. It's anti most high. It's anti what the most high has established and wants. Although that's difficult to do when you're talking 80 generations or whatever. But that would mean that the descendants of Esau, the descendants of Jacob, should be way more similar than they are. And there's all kinds of problems, especially if you've got David looking like Esau. Oh, my goodness. Clearly, the scripture said they're going to be separated to manner of people. Let's read this in the NLT. Maybe that'll help <laughs> uh, you all. This guy's scared. And the Lord told her, the sons in your womb will become two nations from the very beginning, all right, two nations will be rivals. One nation will be stronger than the other, and the older son will serve the younger son. How much uh, more do you need to hear? But let's keep listening to this guy. This guy is scared. This guy is all over the place. We're 38 seconds in, and you've already uh, uh, proven you don't believe in the scriptures. You you. Edomites are used to just going about establishing your own righteousness and it being accepted. Nobody's accepting it anymore. And the people on the comment board are really like, yes, good job. Keep exposing this cult. <laughs> oh, man. Jake Antonio Thomas. You know, that's a Jake. I brought the same scripture to these camps in tension and they asked me to show them in the scripture when Jacob every scene how God looked. If you went to a camp and they brought that out, no, they should have cut you with the scriptures, which is what we're doing. We're going to go into uh, this point he's getting ready to make. Let's go. But here's the one last thing I'm going to show that a lot of times is not brought up in these discussions, and then I'll be done. It's, it's where Jacob is about to meet Esau. I'm going to make it bigger in a second here, in Genesis 32. And then they eventually do meet after this wrestling with the angel and all this kind of discussion, right? But I want to show everyone if what Hebrew Israelites say about Esau is true, then why would Jacob treat him this way? Esau ran to meet him. What about what the Most High says about Esau? Is that true? Huh? Malachi 1 and 4. This is after Jacob. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, the nation of Edom, the Edomites, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Verse three, and I hated Esau. I love Jacob and I hated Esau. 
All right. And then you go through the whole Bible and there's nothing but judgment attached to Esau. OK, I mean, they, they bring out the abhor, not an Edomite, which we broke that down. But let's say that was true. <laughs> then when you get Deuteronomy, the 25th chapter. OK, two chapters later. Two chapters later. In verse 17, Deuteronomy 25, it says, remember what Amalek did to thee, by the way, when you were come out of Egypt. Remember that. How he met thee, by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee. He went after the children and the elderly. As we were uh, on our way to the promised land and all that were feeble behind thee. When thou was faint and weary and he feared not the most high. Therefore, it shall be. When Yahweh thy God have given thee rest from all thy enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, and thou shalt not forget it. So has this happened yet? Has the true Israelites uh, 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 settled in the land All right, that was promised unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all twelve tribes, and the Amalekites, which are Edomites, get blot out, blotted out? Genesis 33, 4. And embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. And when Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children, he said, Who are these with you? Jacob said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Jacob just described himself as Esau's servant. This does not match Hebrew Islamism's identity. Or, I'm sorry, narrative. All right, so let's get into this story. And we'll go back to his video a little bit, but that's pretty much all we need let's get genesis the 27th chapter to give you the background of why this is all happening because after jacob and esau were blessed okay this was the narrative genesis 27 and 41 and esau hated jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him and esau said in his heart the days of the morning of my father are at hand then i will slay my brother jacob OK, so the next verse says in these words of Esau, her elder son were told to Rebecca. Rebecca found out that Esau was mad. He wanted to kill Jacob. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, proposing to kill thee. He's mad. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise, flee. All right. Thou to Laban, my brother, all right, to Haran, all right, go to your family members over in the land of Padanaran, all right, which is in the area of, 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 of Syria. These are sons and daughters of God who are descendants, all right, of Shem through uh, 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 our Faxad all the way down. These are Abraham's people. So she said, go amongst those. All right. Get you a wife. And then ultimately tarry there until Esau calms down. You see. Tarry with him a few days until thy brother's fury turn away until thy brother's anger turn away from thee and he forget that which thou hast done him. <laughs> because you got to remember, it was Rebecca who helped Jacob to come up with this plan to get the birthright, which is how the heavenly father wanted it to be done. OK, it was Jacob's from the beginning. It was from the foundation of the earth. But the heavenly father chose a controversial way on how he got the blessing. Which is why these Edomites are mad. Then will I send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of of both of you in one day? So he's like she was like. Uh, Jacob, go amongst your family in the region of Syria. OK. Now, and that's also a uh, a uh, the reason why in Deuteronomy 23 and 7, it says abhor, not a Syrian, because we had family members amongst them. OK, there were sons and daughters of God going under the name of Syrians. OK, anyway, and Rebecca said to Isaac, I'm weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth and then it goes on. So when you read. 
from Genesis 27 to Genesis 33, it is a journey of our forefather Jacob, okay, going on a, a, a uh, here you go, verse 28 and 1, it says, And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him, saying, Thou shalt not take a daughter, a wife of the daughters of Canaan, arise and go to Padanaram, all right, the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, all right, and take thee a wife, and this was uh, the son of Abraham's brother. Okay, so these are the, the, we were related to these people. Okay, because when you look up Bethuel real quick, real quick, and it's good to get into this history. Bath, wa, bath, wa, al. God destroys man, dweller in God, nephew of Abraham. See, nephew of Abraham by Nahor, by Milka, father of Rebekah. So these were our relatives. All right. So what was told to Jacob? Arise and go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father. And where is Padanaram? Okay. Padanaram. Pa da wa. Or pa, pa, padan. Salakia. Padan. All right, field, plain, or tableland in northern Mesopotamia, all right, in Aram, a region of Syria, okay? This is why in Deuteronomy 23, it says, abhor not Assyrian, Arawam. You see, because we had people over there. The Ra and the Da, all right, are similar. It could have been a mistake. But ultimately, it's a stumbling block. People see Edom, but really it should be Aram, Arawam. But that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time. But as you can see here, Jacob was told to go amongst those people. So Jacob, from <laughs> chapter 28 on, on through, when you read it, okay, is on the run. All right. And as he's on the run, the Heavenly Father gives him dreams to let him know that he's with him. So as you continue reading, all right, and you can read this history. It goes to some very, very good history that you should know. All right. Then you go to. Uh, 29, Genesis 29. All right. Jacob meets Rachel. Now, as Jacob is on his journey. All right. When he goes amongst Laban. OK, his his uh, his uh, uncle, I believe. All right. He starts to work for him in the sense that he wanted his daughter. OK, so Laban and Jacob make a, uh, a deal that you work for me for seven years and you can have my daughter. OK, because as you as, as Jacob's on the run. In Genesis twenty nine. Right here, he's asking the people. And he said unto them, verse five, uh, uh, know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, yeah, we know him. He saw some men and he asked them, do you know Laban? All right. So ultimately, as he sees these men, he also sees Rachel, the daughter of uh, uh, Laban, and he wanted her. So Rachel was promised unto uh, uh, Jacob, all right, by Laban. If you work for seven years. OK. But it would end up happening is that at the end of the seven years. Laban dealt wrong with Jacob. All right. He gave him uh, he gave Jacob Leah instead. So Jacob had to end up working a whole nother year. Now, amongst this time, while Jacob's working for Laban, Jacob is growing rich. He's outshining. Laban and his sons and Laban started to get jealous of Jacob and Jacob started to feel that. OK, you can read that history. Jacob is prospering. Jacob is winning. All right. <laughs> you can read, you know, read these things. I'm not going to go too much into it, but we're going to get to the point that vocab is talking about in just a minute. 
All right. Now, Jacob saw how Laban was dealing and how he was, he, he had spirits on him. So Jacob got up and left. He, he said, I'm going to go back to the land of Canaan and make peace with my brother Esau. OK. You can read that story in, in, in 31. All right. Then Laban pursues after him. Like, why you leave? What the hell? You know, then they end up making a covenant. You know, um. Now, this is uh, uh, Genesis 32 and 1, Jacob's fear for Esau. Okay, so as he's, as he, this is about 21 years later, okay, he's been separated from his family. He's been separated from his brother Esau. Now, he knows Esau wants to kill him. He knows he got the blessing that was so-called supposed to go to Esau, the firstborn. So he's already leery of the spirit Esau is going to be in when he sees him. He knows Esau said, I'm going to kill Jacob ass. You see? So let's keep reading. So what Jacob did in verse three, as he's on his way, Jacob sent messages before him to Esau, his brother, and to the land of Seir, the country of Edom. So Jacob sent messages all right, to, to, to ultimately fill Esau out to see what spirit he was going to be in. And he commanded him, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my Lord Esau, the servant of Jacob. The, thy servant Jacob said thus, I have surjoined with Laban and stayed there till now. Now, when you go into the blessings, it was told to Jacob. Let's get that real quick. Genesis 27. So he's calling Esau, his Lord, because you got to, what's Jacob's name mean? Supplanter. Okay? Supplanter. <laughs> all right? And we're going to get into how that, that all plays out. But the, when, when Jacob got the blessing, what was told to him? G Genesis 27 and 28. Therefore, God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Meaning you're going to rule the whole earth. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. See, let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. So that was already uh, 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 told to Jacob. You're going to be Lord over your brethren. Now, in this chapter that we're uh, uh, reading, Jacob is leery of Esau. He wants to relax the Lord has sent him on a crazy mission. Jacob just wants to sit down, settle. Okay, he'd been through all manner of hell. Even after this, it was another journey. Okay, but let's go here. So Genesis 32 and 4, what we'll do is read this in the NLT. Real quick. Genesis 32 and 4, he said, he told them, give this message to Esau, my master. Humble greetings unto you <laughs> from your servant Jacob. So Jacob is, is, is in the spirit of supplanting. He's like, look, this is the, the letter. He wants Esau to be fully, all right, uh, uh, resolved, fully, you know, he don't want him to think about what was blessed and promised unto Jacob. He don't want Esau to think about that. It says, until now I have been living with Uncle Laban. And now I own cattle, donkeys, flocks of sheep, goats, and many servants, both men and women. I have sent these messengers to inform my Lord of, thy, of my coming, hoping that you will be friendly unto me. So I'm sending you a gift. Before I get there, I want to make sure you good, All right? After delivering the message, the messengers returned unto Jacob and reported, we met your brother Esau and he is already on his way to meet you with an army of 400 men. All right. So what did that do? Jacob was terrified at that news. Jacob was scared. Like, oh, shit, he coming with 400 men. <laughs> so Jacob was terrified. Like, oh, shit, what spirit is he going to be in? He divided his household along with the flocks and the herd and the camels into two groups. So he came up with a plan like, all right, well, if he get me, you know, if he get this side, he ain't going to get that side. You know, he thought of Esau meets one group and attacks it. Perhaps the other can escape. That was, that, that was Jacob's mindset. 
Then Jacob prayed, O God, my father, <laughs> O God of my grandfather, Abraham, all right, and God of my father, Isaac, O Yahweh, you told me, return to your own land <laughs> and to your relatives, and you promised me you will treat me kindly. He told him that through dreams and visions. I am not worthy of all the unfailing love and faithfulness you have shown me, your servant. When I left home and crossed the Jordan River, I owned nothing except a walking stick. Now my household fills two large camps. All right. Remember, he left fleeing from Esau, but he comes back rich. And the Lord sent him on a journey amongst his people who were in the land of Syria. And he came up. He got wives. He got substance. What was what did Jacob say? Oh, Yahweh, please rescue me from the hand of my brother Esau. I am afraid that he is coming to attack me along with my wives and my children. All right. But you promised me. All right. I will surely treat you kindly and I will multiply your descendants until they become as numerous as the sands along the seashore. Too many to count. All right. Which. That was what was promised to Abraham and Isaac, and that, that fell upon Jacob and his 12 sons. Okay? Straight up. They're going to be as the sand of the sea, and in the latter days, a remnant shall return, which is what's happening now. Anyway, so the Lord, Jacob is like, Lord, you promised me that, you know, the, the, the promise you gave unto Abraham and unto Isaac, you know, it falls on me and my 12 sons. All right. Or or me. Because he hadn't had all his sons yet. But. Lord, you know, hey, hey, what's up? You, you, you got to you promise me. This is what he's saying. You promise me. That. My descendants are going to become as the sand of the sea. So if you put me to death, how is that going to happen? If Esau puts me to death, how is that going to happen? Verse 13, Jacob stayed where he was for the night. Then he selected these gifts from his possession to present unto his brother Esau, 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 20 ewes, 20 rams, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 female camels with their young, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 male donkeys. Imagine how much that would be worth in today's money. He divided these animals into herds and assigned each into de different servants. Then he told the servants, go ahead of me with the animals, but keep some distance between the herds. So he gave these instructions to the men leading the first group. When my brother Esau meets you, he will ask, whose servants are you? What are you? Uh, where are you going? Who owns these animals? You must reply, they belong to your servant. This is what he wanted Esau to hear. He knows Esau's God complex. He knows his brother. So he's like, let him know that I'm his servant. <laughs> right. I, but the, the, they belong to your servant, Jacob, when really Esau's the servant. The elder is going to serve the younger. But they are a gift for his master Esau. Look, he is coming right behind us. So Jacob planned this out. And Jacob gave the same instructions to the second, all right, and to the uh, third, and so forth. So then what happens next? Jacob wrestles with the angel. His thigh is out of joint. So Jacob is at a pure disadvantage if this thing's according to the flesh. So the next chapter, let's get Genesis 33, is where vocab is at. Jacob meets Esau, okay? They meet each other. They embraced each other. OK. And, and, and Jacob is just wants to relax. He wants to chill. He doesn't want any smoke. He's tired. He's been through all manner of hell. So he wants to get this over with so that he can relax in the land <laughs> that was promised unto him. Right. Let's see here. So. The gift itself and how Jacob presented it calmed Esau down. Okay? Esau was even like, look, man. They bowed themselves to uh, Esau. You know, Esau saw his nephews. He was like, oh, yeah, man. Hey, man. Damn, you, you doing good for yourself. 
verse uh, 8, and he said, What meanest thou by all this drove which I met? And he said, These are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. So Jacob, again, let, what, what does Jacob mean? Let's look up the word Jacob. See, this is why we, the Israelites, should be breaking this Bible down. You Christians, you Edomites do a horrible job. And you don't bring out the, 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 the juice, the juiciness of the matter. <laughs> All right, your Iquab. Here, heel holder or supplanter. What does the word supplanter mean? And, and that spirit is in us into this day. That's how we're get, kind of getting through this uh, uh, captivity. There's a, a, uh, a certain level of supplanting you have to do in righteousness. Okay? You got you to gotta be chill. You, the police pull you over. Hey, Yahawashai taught that. Agree with thine adversary, right? So Jacob is in the spirit here. What the hell is he supposed to do? You are eating my motherfucker. No. He's at a disadvantage. He don't want to smoke. He wants to chill. He's been on a, 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 a long, weary road. Which it was even more traveling he had to do after this. It says supplant. <laughs> Uh, uh, supersede and replace, all right, uh, trip up, supplanter. That's it, all right? And that's what he's doing, okay? But his name was changed to Yasha'Allah, Israel, man. So Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if I have now found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand, Okay, so Esau is asking, as a matter of fact, let's put this in the NLT as well. <laughs> Genesis 33 and 8. And what are all these flocks and herds I met as I came? Esau asked, Jacob replied, they are a gift, my Lord, to ensure your friendship. <laughs> my brother, I have plenty, Esau said. Keep what you have for yourself. But Jacob insisted, no, if you have found if I have found favor with you, please accept this gift from me. And what a relief to see you, your friendly smile. It's like seeing the face of God. This is all Jacob said. <laughs> and why is he saying this? Let's read it in the, in the King James. And he said, what meanest thou by uh, verse 10? It says, and Jacob said, nay. I pray if I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at mine hand. For therefore I have seen thy face as though I have seen the face of the most high. And thou was pleased with me. So he was happy. He, he, he was putting it on thick, but he was basically what he was saying. Seeing you is like seeing the face of God. <laughs> Please take this gift I have brought you. For God have been very gracious to me. I have more than enough. And because Jacob insisted, Esau finally accepted the gift. All right. So it was a, it was a Jacob did what he needed to do to be in good graces with Esau. And you got to remember, this is his brother. So he wanted peace with his brother. OK, but we know ultimately the judgment that's going to still come to Esau. This is just a point in the story. Well, Esau said, let's be going. I will lead the way. But Jacob was like, you, uh, you can see, my Lord, that some of my children are very young and the flocks of the herd are, have, have their young, too. If they are driven too hard, even for one day, the animals could die. So Jacob was like, no, you go ahead. All right. Uh, uh, and we will follow slowly. So Jacob was being very careful with Esau and Esau agreed. So the Lord was with Jacob as he had promised. OK. And uh, uh, Esau went back to uh, uh, Seir and Jacob traveled to Sukkoth. All right. And where he built two houses. OK. See, yada, yada, yada. And he built the altar. All right. Like because the Lord was with him. So I don't understand how that takes away from the judgment. Let's get the book of Obadiah. Get the book of Obadiah. Y'all see how desperate this man is? That's where he went to save Esau 
But I thought Esau's done away with. Why are you trying to save a nation that the Lord already destroyed? Anyway. This proves that these people don't believe in the Bible, man. This is a future prophecy, man. Obadiah 1 and 18. As a matter of fact, when David got his kingdom. What did he do to the Edomites? When the throne of David was established, what did he do to the Edomites? First Chronicles 18 and 13. And he put garrisons in Edom and all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus, the Lord. All right. Preserve David wherever he went. So the Lord wasn't mad with David. He preserved David. The Edomites became David's servants. Okay. So this is when David was ruling. But there you go. Two nations, the, 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 that, see, the, the two nations in the womb of Rebecca. OK, are, are are even struggling at this time that David gets his kingdom. And this was also a fulfillment of what was written here. It wasn't fully fulfilled. But when when Jacob was blessed, saying, let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee and uh, be Lord over thy brethren. That was happening here when Jake, Jacob, which David is Jacob, <laughs> if you could receive it. That's a whole nother lesson. That's why it's called the Tabernacle of Jacob, the, the house of David, the house of Jacob. Okay, because the blessing falls upon the 12 through him. Okay, it's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Okay, it says, and he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servant. Thus the Lord preserved David where, whithersoever he went. So, not only is Vocab Malone getting on us, he's getting on David, he's getting on the Most High himself, he's getting on Paul. So basically, all of these writings that are evil towards Esau because of uh, the, what happened in Genesis, the 33rd chapter and the 10th verse, you're wrong in your doctrine. So they're bucking up against the Most High himself. God damn. And he placed garrisons in Edom and all the Edomites became David's subjects. In fact, the Lord made David victorious when, wh wh wherever he went. Okay. <laughs> Remember Saul uh, was supposed to slay Agag? Goodness gracious. <laughs> First Samuel 15 and 8. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep. So he was supposed to slay Agag. That was the order. Saul was disobedient to the order. The order was to slay Agag. Now, who was Agag? P Saul was told, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Who, who's Amalek? So you got all of this history of hatred and back and forth between the nation of Israel and the nation of Esau or Edom. Yet all you can do is try to go into the Bible and make the most high love Esau, because you are Esau. I, Malach, dweller in the valley. All right? A descendant of Esau. Son of Esau by his concubine, Timnah. So, all throughout the Bible, I mean, we ain't got to go through all of the scriptures. This is Obadiah 1 and 18. In the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord has spoken it. So even if y'all doctrine is true that the Edomites are already destroyed, they're destroyed because the Lord has a problem with them. I mean, all throughout the Bible, we find the Lord bringing up this nation of people in a bad sense. Amos 1 and 11. And thus said the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetuously and he kept his wrath forever. So Edom is going to pay. These are all of the nations for, for, for that are going to be judged. And this is after Jacob 
all right, said that he 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 thought he had basically subscribed described seeing Esau as seeing the face of the most high himself or the power. So any camp who this is presented with this, you you should already know the history of what happened in Genesis, the 33rd chapter, to be able to cut him. So you you Christians better not come up to no great millstone camp with that garbage. I know even if you go up to Sakari or any of these other camps, you should be cut by this. This is horrible. And you got 37 comments with people. <laughs> oh, Esau was a black man. <laughs> Plus, it's his twin brother, literally, from a logical perspective. How do you arrive at this conclusion? How do you? Uh, well, well, prophecy. Prophecy is how. I don't know exactly what he's saying. Keep exposing wonderful scriptures. This is the go-to verse when they bring up Revelation 1 and 14. Two can play that game. And these are Jakes. Some of these are Jakes, Israelites, helping Esau. Then the servants drew near, they and their children, and bowed down. Who are they bowing to? They're bowing to Esau. Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed. Yeah, because Jacob told him to bow to him. He's trying to soften him up. So that he can relax. Bowed down. And last, Joseph and Rachel drew near, and they bowed down. So look at this. He literally has his whole company bowed down. And in fact, he himself did the same thing. Verse 3. He himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. So I, I want to bring that out. And one, one last thing in this passage. I'm not going to go to any other passage right now. Look what he says. Why did you bring all those people with you? Esau asked him, right? To find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. So Esau's supposed to be, you know, the greedy uh, white guy and this and that. And yet they're hugging, they're kissing. He's bowed down seven times. And then you have him not wanting to take any of his stuff. No, please, if I have found favor in your sight, then accept my present from my hand. For I've seen your face, which is like seeing the face of God. Now, if Esau was a white man, which I don't believe that's accurate at all. How in the world could Jacob, who you guys say is a black man, say that seeing his face is like seeing the face of God? Can I, can I respond to that? Yes, briefly? sir. I'll drop off, but I just want to point out the children. Notice here is in the bottom of the passage, so we're talking about the same thing. That this narrative that you guys have is very different than what the scripture itself has, and that is proof positive of it. I want to briefly respond that the passage you just brought up, it needs more context to it because... True, true. Because if you read above that, it'll actually give you details as to why Jacob responded to Esau the way that he did. He was afraid of. Him. I mentioned that before. Before he uh, encountered Esau, he had to split up. Oh boy, his family. And so the 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 ones he had in front of him was for him to give to Esau because once again, he was afraid of Esau. He didn't want Esau to take out on him what happened. And so his response to him wasn't, it was based on him trying to save himself and his family, basically. He yeah, no, I, you're right. I, I mentioned that. He, he's right. Uh, yeah, he's right. I believe you. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure that everyone sees with the context, what you're saying. Uh, Jacob in verse 30 of the previous chapter says, he named the place PNL saying, for I have seen God face to face. So here right. he says he's seen God face to face, talking about the angel that he wrestled with. Then right after it, he says, like seeing Esau is like seeing God face to face. Yeah, he, he made that mention he to pacify his brother. There you go. So was, he, was he lying? What you... Wouldn't it be blasphemous to see a white man and say that? His name is Ja'iquab. He, he, he took the birthright from his brother, according to how the Heavenly Father had it set up. But again, you you you're desperate. You're scared. Because I thought that the Edomites were done away with. If the Edomites are done away with, it doesn't even matter. So Esau don't ain't gonna make it. Esau ain't in good graces with the Heavenly Father. Uh, 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 I could see an Edomite 
today and have a good conversation with him about the, the football game, the baseball game, about resin, about incense. Okay, have a nice day. That was a good conversation. That don't take away from the true judgment of the Edomites. But anyway, check out the pre shards video. I mean, I mean, we can go to so many uh, verses that go into the judgment of Esau after this. So this means that the prophets themselves were going off. Ezekiel 35, Ezekiel 25. So this is proof that the Christian church is telling the Most High himself he's wrong. Read, read Ezekiel 25, 12 through uh, uh, 14. He's going to lay vengeance upon Edom. Jeremiah 49, 50, 51. Let's get one more scripture. This is the book of Obadiah. <laughs> Obadiah, uh, verse 21, and Savior shall come up on the Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, which starts with Babylon the Great, and then the kingdom shall be the Lord's. So the, 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 the Edomites are ruling right now. The Edomites are the final heathen rulership before the Lord sets up the kingdom. Now, the question is, are we at the end of the world? Most people will say, yeah. Most people who believe in the Bible will say, well, yeah, we're at the end. Well, that would mean Esau had to be ruling, not Japheth, Esau. All right, so uh, on to the next, man. Shalom.